Hallelujah. I may not have the time to discuss it, but please write it down. Number one, you need a statement of faith that guides your life. How far is far in your walk with God? How far is far as far as the church you are leading is concerned? All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. By the message of God, I have the privilege of preaching across several places, several denominations. And as a principle, I learn to adapt to whatever is the modus operandi of any church that I find. But I have my personal convictions. I don't preach everywhere because I agree with everything there. I have my reservations. However, it is not enough reason for differences. But as far as mentoring and building those under your care concern, you have to define what being a spiritual person is. Define the parameters for true spirituality. Number two. The second challenge that I wish I had the time to talk about was the fact that many people are in ministry who have been wounded and did not stay to be healed and they got into ministry as simple as this sounds it is dangerous to carry the mantle of priesthood when you are not healed a scar is proof that a wound was once there but is now healed and if that scar is not if that wound is not healed god does not send you most of the envy, the jealousy, the backbiting, and lots of things that you see happening across the body of Christ, the root of it is that people have pains that came from their background that they did not stay with the spirit to be healed from. Then they spiritualize that pain. Are we together now? Growing up in life and ministry, I really did not know that emotional wounds were real I just focused on physical wounds but now as God has helped me to grow I have seen that emotional wounds can be like diabetes it can stay there for years there are people carrying all kinds of pain their anger is what send them to go and pray and fast the, the search for the anointing was not to bless people it was from a standpoint of competition let me tell you this only wounded people wound others when you are healed you don't wound others when you rejoice over the pain of another man another person's ministry when you are happy when you see people going down no matter how you spiritualize it it is because there is an injury psychologists are wise enough and most of us have churches full of intelligent people they can look at you as a pastor and know that this sermon is not the holy spirit this sermon came from your background it came from your pain you are trying to manage your frustrations listen 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 I really I have to honor the time and stop and then all of you are here but I want you to please get this you need to go and stay with the Holy Spirit and say heal me oh God I don't know what injury Joseph your brothers threw you in the pit you are not even aware that you are wounded already make sure you are healed before you see them it took a healed Joseph to ignore the wickedness of his brothers it took a healed Joseph to not punish Potiphar. If I am Joseph, as I'm coming out as a prime minister, who is the first person you will call? Potiphar, where are you? You and the wife, get back into that prison. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Most of us came from polygamous families. You did not realize the effect. Most of us probably did not go to school early most of our parents made nasty comments and you did not know that it was wound upon wound they called you a failure they said you will never amount to anything just because you are old doesn't mean you are healed you can be old in age still carrying the wound of childhood so you don't know why you are an angry man of god the moment someone says this is your shoe is it original or fake that can become a two-year war he was just throwing a joke but the jokes touched an injury. Listen carefully. We're wrapping up, but you need to hear this. 
If we want to see unity, there is a revelation that brings unity. Are we together? Healed. There are preachers that are not healed. That is the reason why there is fight for membership. There are preachers that are not healed. Is the reason why we dishonor elderly people. Are we together now? Yes. Most of the things we do from a fake life to selling lies on the internet to trying to use dressing to show that faith is working. All of those things are proof of a wound. I'm telling you this. When a young man gets into ministry and in one year his dream is just to buy a private jet, have the largest church, he may not be wrong, but the young man has been wounded. He does not even know what is motivating this. It's not always demons. You strongly believe your life is going to receive a quantum shift after this message. Please do well to subscribe, like and share this video to bless the lives of many out there. Stay tuned to the end. Demons have surprised themselves because what they did and what they did not do, we're all blaming them. We are going to pray. Oh. You've been patient. Listen, most of you ask your congregations for extra time. Let me ask you for extra time now. We are going to pray. Listen to me. Please hear me. What do you think will become of a general overseer's wife? who was wounded by her stepmother called a bad lady a prostitute called whatever now she's married a man of god she's in a church most likely she will look at every other woman's dressing she's not a bad woman she's only a wounded woman who is this woman always dressing rich mark her for me all these useless wars in church i am telling you the cure is not just reconciliation the cure is healing Because I have a mindset that if I celebrate Pastor Godman and I celebrate the work he's doing, what if I lose my relevance? That orientation came as a result of a wound. Aircrafts don't crash in the air because there is space for every aircraft no matter how big it is. Some of you right here, you are in this place. I know we are pastors. Let God use me for one minute to heal someone before we wrap up. There are some of you who cannot see yourself. I, you are here now, but you cannot look eyeball to eyeball because you are angry. And most of those who have that anger don't have growth. So what they are fighting about is not it truly is unnecessary. You are looking for something to blame. And if there's nobody else to blame, your wife becomes a victim. Listen to me. Men of God, we have lost valuable people in our churches because we've not been able to tame our anger, tame our jealousy. Some of you are jealous even with your children and your sons and daughters. People you raise, you still fight them. It's not because you want them to fail. It's because you want to succeed alone. And that succeeding alone came because you did not take first position. You watch awards given to people and there is still the craving of a primary school child crying within an individual, still wanting to be celebrated alone. Let me teach you something. Let's, let's do a little consultancy. This is not a man of God now. The highest psychological need of any man, including you looking at me, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, and the need to feel appreciated. Say after me, loved. Say valued say appreciated one more time say loved valued appreciated anybody including your spouse who violates that law becomes your enemy i'll tell you where your wars are coming from because someone bruised your ego knowingly or unknowingly you stepped into a meeting and the person trivialized your apostleship 
and you walked out of that meeting marking his face and he became your enemy forever tonight be healed be healed you have been wounding your congregations you tell them you are shouting at them because they went left they moved right you still shouted it's not the direction it's you PFN, I'm sorry, oh, you invited me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, please, everybody stand. Everybody stand. I'm going to give you the next five minutes. I'd like you to walk to everybody you can find and just tell them, I bless you and I honor you. Go ahead. God bless you. Hold the person, whether you know the person or not. I bless you and I honor you. We fought during the crusade, but we are still Christians. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We are neighbors, but I've never entered your church to see what God is doing. Please appreciate someone. I honor you. You may have 30 members, but I appreciate you. You may have two members, but I appreciate you. Take a minute. You'll soon return to your seat. Make sure you celebrate them. I don't care how many members you have. I know you are still learning. We may not be at the same level of grace, but just for you to know that we are stronger together, stronger together, stronger together, stronger together. the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace that our hearts always please return back to your seats rejoicing we're out of time Return back to your seat. We're about to pray. Return back to your seat. I know you are a prophet. I respect you as a prophet. I know you are an apostle. I respect you as an apostle. I don't downplay your stay. Listen. Let me tell you this. When you derive joy in demeaning the relevance of another man of God, it does not make you great. Fathers, please, we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Let me have your attention, please. God wants to tell us something serious now. Listen, please. Fathers, you are greatly honored, but respect the sons. They have an advantage of time and can learn experience from you. Every father has shown us what he can become, but we do not yet know what the sons will become. Eli, you play the role in the life of Samuel but don't demean that young boy that is the prophet who will ordain Saul that is the prophet who will ordain David sons respect fathers it doesn't matter what they preach it doesn't matter how many times you travel to the spirit and come back you are still a son if a baby takes 10 tins of breast milk the baby does not become an adult the baby becomes a healthy baby. Hallelujah. Let me speak especially to younger people in ministry. Don't follow this blind and foolish campaign of pointing fingers against fathers. Can I tell you, the more I grow in ministry, the more I'm silent. When you see fathers quiet, find out why. Young people have sin without wisdom. When a father says hmm, and keeps quiet, keep quiet as a young man too, you'll be wiser. Are we together? Contemporaries, let's respect ourselves. Now, if you find somebody's ministry, people are not idiots. They know truth when they see it. And the moment you begin to find people, you make you show your insecurity, it comes on display. 
because those who are helped by God walk ever conscious of his mercy over their lives so I will end my session by saying this Apostle John speaking by the Spirit he wrote to three groups of people I write to you fathers I write to you young men I write to you children no matter the category of age and experience in ministry there is something written to you a letter from God what God is telling the fathers is not what he's telling the young men no the fathers have wisdom and experience the young men have strength the children have malleability of heart you can make them become anything hold hands with someone we're about to wrap up Lord make us instruments hatred let your love increase Lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments Please look at me man of God if your principles and practices are wrong I don't condemn you but change if you have been mentored when I say unity I don't mean embracing everything because there are things in the body of Christ that are absolute nonsense don't mistake in what I'm saying if it is not Jesus crucified if it is not Jesus glorified if it is not Jesus revealed so when we talk of coming together we are not saying, don't carry Rachel, leave the idols of your father's house. There is a better covenant with God. There are some of us, it was poor mentorship that led you into all kinds of extra biblical practices. While we do not condemn you, there is room for repentance. Change now. Use this conference to change. Some of you were taught by wrong friends manipulative ways to raise money for church. There are veterans with understanding who can help you on how to structure church finances with integrity. Find them. Go and sit down under their meetings and learn. There are some of us who have all kinds of character challenges. These are things you have been ignoring for a long time but is telling on you. Go back and work on yourself. At every level, growth is still possible. Are we together now? So when I say this, the Bible says to examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith. Honestly, there are people I love, but they cannot be my friends. I love them sincerely, but until I see the degree of your yieldedness to Christ and his purposes, I love you from afar and I wish you well. But it will be a risk to bring you into my space. Your, your emotional carelessness is not healthy for friendship with me. Your level of indiscipline with anything at all. Say anything you want to say. Do anything you want to do. Dump into people's house. Collect their cars. Collect whatever. In the name of prophetic instructions. I love you but change. Don't harass any member to collect money from them. They didn't send you. If you are bankrupt, go to the one who sent you and say, What was the strategy for my feeding? Are we together? I have to say this we cannot end a pastor's conference without pointing this the truth is that some of you have lost your honor it faded like a leaf because of character issues your issue was not revelation you lack character once you drop down from the pulpit you are almost as if you've never given your life to Christ there are young people that carelessness started from campus and there was no system to tame it some of us are learning all kinds of rubbish learning all kinds of rubbish it has to change anybody who is coming to your church plundering you or making you disturb wealthy people in your church or all kinds of character challenges I don't condemn you never will I we are products of God's mercy but for God's sake some of you may need to take a break for a few weeks and sit down with a seasoned man of God and say help me I have anger 
help me I have lost help me I have what again jealousy bitterness envy huh? unforgiveness oh, over my dead body no 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 repent now repent. repent this is why we are holding hands one prayer and I leave this place show me mercy oh God don't pray for your congregation don't worry about your congregation pray for yourself obtain mercy walk upon my heart someone pray walk upon my heart give me longevity of impact in ministry let me be a person of love genuinely 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 let me become a builder to the body not a destroyer someone go ahead and pray repent for the manipulations you may have caused to the members of your church ask God to show you mercy the Lord is nigh them that call upon him make a cry before God I'm ready to do ministry with integrity from today integrity from today given to prayer given to the study of the word given to laboring to build God's people go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart We strongly believe your life has been transformed already at the cross of this message. Please do follow us daily for more spiritual contents that will defy your spiritual life and growth. God bless you. See you on our next video.